The process of creation is the process of being, doing, and having. First, you must be the thing called happy, or knowing, or wise, or compassionate, or whatever. Then you will start doing things from this place of beingness. And soon you discover what you are doing winds up bringing you the things that you have always wanted to have. The way to set this creative process into motion is to look at is what you want to have. Ask yourself what you would need to be if you had that. Then go straight into being. In life, you do not have to do anything. Deciding ahead of time what you choose to be produces that in your experience. Happiness is a state of mind, and like all states of mind, it reproduces itself in physical form. All states of mind reproduce themselves. So act as if you are, and you will draw it to you. What you act as if you are, you become. But everything you do, do out of sincerity, where the benefit of the action is lost. Natural law requires the body, the mind, and the soul to be united in thought, to be united in word, and united in action. You cannot fool your mind. If you are insincere, your mind knows it. And that's that. Who you really are is whomever you choose to be. Whatever aspect of divinity you wish to be, that's who you really are. But that can change at any given moment. Indeed, it often does from moment to moment. Yet if you want your life to settle down, to stop bringing you such a wide variety of experiences, there's a way to do that. Simply stop changing your mind so often about who you really are and who you choose to be. Make your choice. Make a stand. Stand up. This is who I am. This is where I stand. This is why I stand. Make these decisions from your soul. The choices of the spirit are always the highest choices. They don't need to be second guessed. They simply need to be followed and acted upon. But it is not uncommon for your body to want one thing while your mind seeks another and your spirit desires you yet a third. When these choices conflict, when your body, mind, and spirit are not acting as one, the process of creation works at all of these levels, and this produces mixed results. If, on the other hand, your being is in harmony and your choices are unified, astonishing things can occur. There are also levels within levels in your decision making. This is particularly true at the level of the mind. Your mind can and does make decisions and choices from at least three interior levels. The logic, the intuition, and the emotion. And sometimes from all three of these levels at the same time. And within the level of emotion, there are five more levels. There are five natural emotions. Grief, anger, envy, fear, and love. The five natural emotions include love and fear. Yet love and fear are the basics of all emotions. The other three of the five natural emotions are outgrowths of those two. Ultimately, all thoughts 
are sponsored by love or fear. This is the great polarity. This is the primal duality. Everything ultimately breaks down to one of these. All thoughts, concepts, understandings, decisions, choices, and actions are based in one of these. And in the end, there is really only one. Love. In truth, love is all there is. Even fear is an outgrowth of love and when used effectively expresses love. In its highest form, everything expresses love. Fear in its highest form becomes love. Similarly, moving up the scale of natural emotions, grief, anger, and envy are all some form of fear, which is in turn some form of love. One thing leads to another. Grief is a natural emotion. It's that part of you which allows you to say goodbye when you don't want to say goodbye. To express, to push out, to propel the sadness within you. But the experience of any kind of loss could be the loss of a loved one or the loss of a contact lens. When you are allowed to express your grief, you get rid of it. Grief that is continually repressed becomes chronic depression. A very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of chronic depression. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. Anger is a natural emotion. It is the tool you have which allows you to say no thank you. It does not have to be abusive and it never has to be damaging to another. Anger that is continually repressed becomes rage, a very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of rage. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. Envy is a natural emotion. It is the emotion that makes a five-year-old wish to ride a bike the way his sister can. It makes you want to do it again, to try harder, to continue striving until you succeed. It is very healthy to be envious, very natural. Envy that is continually repressed becomes jealousy, a very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of jealousy. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. Fear is a natural emotion. All babies are born with only two fears. The fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. All of their fears are learned responses. The purpose of fear is to build in a bit of caution. And caution is a tool that helps the body stay alive. Fear is an outgrowth of love, the love of self. Fear that is continually repressed becomes panic, a very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of panic. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. Love is a natural emotion. When it is allowed to be expressed and received normally and naturally, without limitation or condition, inhibition or embarrassment, it does not require anything more. 
For the joy of love expressed and received in this way is as sufficient unto itself. Yet love which has been conditioned, limited, warped by rules and regulations and rituals and restrictions, controlled and manipulated and withheld, becomes unnatural. Love that is continually repressed becomes possessiveness, a very unnatural emotion. People have killed because of possessiveness. Wars have started. Nations have fallen. And so it is that the natural emotions, when repressed, produce unnatural reactions and responses. And most natural emotions are repressed by most people. Yet these are your friends. These are your gifts. These are your divine tools with which to craft your experience. You are given these tools at birth. They are there to help you negotiate through life. The time has come for truth telling. Plain and simple. Truth is often uncomfortable. It is only comforting to those who do not wish to ignore it. Then, truth becomes not only comforting, but inspiring. I would have you know about life, how it works, and why it works the way it does. In truth, you have imprisoned your holy self, and it is time to set yourself free.